Hey guys, today we're going to be making the perfect potato soup. Here are the things that you're going to need. You're going to need a stock pot with a lid, a chef's knife, a uh, vegetable peeler, measuring spoons, a measuring cup, your bacon, milk, heavy cream, salt, pepper, Cajun spice, flour, that's all-purpose flour, not self-rising flour. We're going to use, um, the recipe calls for six small russet potatoes. I'm using eight because a couple of my potatoes are super small. It calls for three carrots. We're using one and a half for two reasons. One, I only had one and a half carrots. And the second is I don't like carrots. And then we're also going to need four stalks of celery and two containers of chicken broth. The recipe also calls for fresh parsley. We didn't have any at our local grocery store out here in the country. So the first thing you're going to do is it calls for six slices of bacon. Um, I made this this past weekend for my family. If you cut your bacon directly in half, that's exactly what how much bacon you need. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my bacon out and I'm going to cut it in small pieces. So I'm just going to rock my knife and come back with it. Okay. Now, while this is in the pan, I will go ahead and peel and wash my vegetables. Okay. So my son is my sous chef today, so he always gets to help. All right. So I've cut up my bacon. And if you notice, I've used two different cutting boards. You do not want to cut your vegetables on the same board that you cut your meat. Okay. So we're going to put this in the stock pot to cook. on a medium heat. Okay, so I've got it in my stock pot on medium heat um, so that it cooks nice and slow and you have the time to work with your other vegetables. Okay. Now, before you start peeling your vegetables, uh, you're going to want to wash them and wash the knife that you just used because you're going to use it again. So, we're going to pause the video and I'm going to wash my vegetables. Okay, just like with the apples on the apple sonker, you're going to take your um, vegetable peeler and come straight down the vegetable. I will say that potatoes are a whole lot easier to peel with the banana peeler than the apple was. So you come down each side, then you come across the bottom. Okay, now I'm going to do that with all of my potatoes and then I'll be back. All right. Our potatoes are peeled. Now, I am I live out in the country, so I do not have a garbage disposal, so we compost. So I have a bucket right here that we put all of our pills in that we will compost out in the field. Now, I noticed when I was peeling the potatoes that a couple of my potatoes had some brown spots in them, and we're going to cut those out. All right, so this potato has a yucky spot, so that's a technical term. And so what I'm going to do is cut the potato in half, cut it in half again, and then I'm going to slice off the bad portion. And if you notice, I sliced away from my hand, 
And the same thing goes right here. I'm just going to thinly slice across that. You want to save as much of your potato as possible. You want your potatoes diced in about equal sizes. Okay. And I'm just going to put them in a bowl. You want to make sure that you keep your fingers out of the way as you're dicing your vegetables. You do not want the potatoes too small. You want to try to keep them uniform in shape, meaning you keep them about the same size. Now, I tend to cut mine like this where you have the whole potato there. If you are not comfortable doing it that way, do it the way I started doing it. You're going to cut it in half, lay each half down, cut down each half, and then make your dice cut. And then put them in the bowl. You do not want to cut your potato in your hand. This one has a little bit of a brown spot. I'm going to shave off the ends with the knife, cutting away from my hand. Right, I'm going to cut up the rest of these potatoes and I'll be back with you in a minute. Alright, now we're going to move to the onion. Alright, so what you're going to do with your onion is you have a stem in and a root in. Okay, you're going to cut off the top of the onion and then you're going to cut the onion in half. Okay, just like that. Now, the reason we left this on is it holds your onion together as you're cutting. So you're just gonna take the peel off the outside. Make sure you get it all off your board. You don't want it in your soup. Like that. Now what you're going to do is you're going to cut up into the onion but not all the way through the end. Okay? And the reason we do that is it helps hold the onion together. Okay? And then we're going to turn Keeping our fingers, think of a claw. You're going to hold that as a claw. I wish you could see it better. Maybe if I turn it this way. And you're going to go down into the onion. Dicing it up. Now, I know some of you say, I don't like onion. You don't really taste the onion in the soup. But it gives it that extra flavor that you need. Okay? Then you take this piece. And throw it away. And we're just going to move the onion over to the side of the board. Do the next half. Remember you're cutting up through the onion but not through the end. I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way where you can see. Then you're going to claw Hold it together and come down through the onion. And try to keep even pieces if at all possible. And then throw the end away. Okay? 
Now that looks like a lot of onion, but it's a 12 serving um, soup recipe, so it's really not that much. All right, I'm gonna stir the bacon real quick. Okay. Now, the celery, what you're going to do is you are going to cut off the end and then the white part. Okay? And you're just going to slice that up. And we're going to move it over with the onion because the onions, the carrots, and the celery all go into the soup at the same time. And I keep moving my finger down the celery as to not cut it. When I get to the end, you want to make sure that your fingers are out of the way. Okay, same thing for the next stalk. I'm going to finish cutting up the other two stalks of celery and I'll be right back. All right, now we're going to move on to our carrots. For our carrots, it's very simple to peel. You just go down and take off a thin slice of the carrot. Now, uh, we are going to dice these carrots uh, very thinly. Um, I have been known to uh, actually shave the carrots for my soup. Carrots need to be in the soup. It does add a lot of flavor. But like I've said before, carrots are not my favorite vegetable. Um, so if I were making this soup um, for myself and not for other people, I would probably shave the carrots. And shaving the carrot is just like peeling it. Take the top layer off and then you're just going to go down the carrot and get these little ribbons, okay? All right, so you're gonna cut the tip and the top of the carrot. Now, one thing you need to know about carrots is they are very hard. So what we're going to do is take and gently tap the back of the knife and cut down through the carrot, okay? We're gonna do the same thing over here. And what we're trying to do is cut it in half. All right, and then we're going to, just as we did with the celery, we're going to cut it into thin pieces and moving it to the side with the onion and the celery. Give me a moment and we'll be right back. Okay, so now that I have my uh, root vegetables, my celery, my carrots, and my onions chopped up, I'm going to go over and check my bacon. My bacon is finished. Now, I'm going to take my bacon out to drain, but do not take the grease out of the pot. You're going to use this bacon grease for your vegetables. So, it says so in the recipe, in all bold letters, do not wash your pot. got my bacon out. Now I'm going to put in my onions, celery, and carrots. Okay. 
Now you can hear that cooking and we are going to uh, cook it for two minutes and then add in the potatoes. All right, it's been two minutes. Now I'm going to add in my potatoes and stir those in. And I'm gonna add in my spices. Okay, so my recipe says that I need um, a half a teaspoon of salt, it says pepper to taste. I normally use a teaspoon of pepper just because my family likes spicy food, but you could use a half a teaspoon if you wanted to. And then it says a half a teaspoon of Cajun mix. Now, the one thing you should know is when you open the top of the Cajun mix, you have these holes. That's great if you're sprinkling it on, but because I know that I need a half a teaspoon, I'm going to put my teaspoon, half a teaspoon in there, shake it off, and then add it to my stock. Okay, then I'm going to stir it, and it needs to cook for five minutes. So I'm going to set my timer, and we'll see you back in a few seconds. Okay, it's been five minutes. We're now going to add eight cups of chicken broth. Now, um, eight cups would be two of these containers. So you just pour it in. and you're going to bring it to a gentle boil. And what it means by a gentle boil is you want to see it to start to boil, but you don't want it to boil to the point that it's boiling out all over your stove. So that'll take 10 minutes. I'm gonna turn the heat up. Once it comes to the boil, then I'll set the timer or start the timer. Okay, so as you can see, my uh, soup is at a low boil. While it's finishing up its last few minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and mix my roux. A roux is simply a thickener. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a cup of whole milk and three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. You want to make sure that it's level. You don't want too much in there. So you could take the back of a knife and level that off and pour it into your milk. Then you're going to take your whisk and whisk it, whisk it together. What you're looking for is no lumps in your roux. All right, our 10 minutes is up, and it says to cook for 10 minutes or until the potatoes are tender. The way you're going to check for to see if the potatoes are tender is to fork one of your potatoes bring it over to your cutting board and see how easy it is to squish if it squishes fairly easily then your potatoes are ready so our potatoes are ready I'm going to put this one back in the soup and now it says to stir in our roux that we just made. So you're going to pour it in slowly. You do not want to dump it in all at once because it is a thickener. It will thicken up very quickly. 
And if you notice, our boiling has stopped. So you're going to let it come back to a boil and cook it for another five minutes. Okay, we have now um, added our roux. It says in the instructions to take out half of the soup and put it in the blender and blend it up. Um, I prefer not to do that, so I'm not going to do that. If you want to do that, please be super careful when you do that because you're going to burn yourself if not. But I am going to add my half a cup of heavy cream. If you'll notice, heavy cream is very thick. So I'm going to add that to my soup. Give it a couple of minutes and you're ready. Now, the bacon that we made at the beginning um, to get our grease for our pot, what you're going to do is when you serve this up in your bowl, you'll sprinkle it with your bacon if you have parsley. Sprinkle a little parsley on there and a little grated cheese of your choice. I hope you guys enjoy this soup. My family loves it.